So the spending equation then that we're going to look at today is a series of ratios. The ratio of sigma, which is the stress induced in bending, to the distance from the new fracture uh, to any point on the beam, usually the outside of the beam. So the ratio of the stress to that distance is the same as the ratio of the applied moment to the second moment of area. It's the same as the ratio of, the str of Young's measure of two raised to curvature. And we, if we know some of these things, like the stress or the moment or Young's modulus, we can then use that to find others given these ratios. We don't tend to use all of this equation. So as we'll see when we look at some examples, we might decide we want to know what the applied moment is, so we need the equation to involve the applied moment. Uh, we know the stress on the beam. We know the distance from the neutral axis to the point that it's in consideration, usually the outside of the beam. And we have the means to find out the second moment of area. So therefore, we don't need this part of the equation, so we don't need it. And we might have another problem where we know Young's modulus and we know the rates of curvature, so we'd use this part of the equation. So in other words, the, the equation is not always used in its entirety. In fact, it's never used in its entirety. We just use two of the ratios, two of the given three. And if you remember any work you've done in the past on, or you may have done in the past on the sign rule, similar sort of thing. We only ever use two of the ratios. <coughs> the second moment of area, this part of the um, equation, the second moment of area, I, is to do with how the forces are applied to different cross-sections. So that's derived depending on what shape the beam has, whether it's an I-beam or a tubular beam, the common one, or rectangular cross-section, or some sort of solid cylindrical beam. They're the ones we're going to look at. And we calculate the second moment of area according to the type of beam. So the best way to proceed is by way of example. Uh, but before we start looking at these examples, let's look at these equations to find the second moment of area. So these are a series of equations to find the second moment of area. <coughs> and in your notes, you've got these equations. I think they're around about page 16, 17, 18, something like that. Second moment of area formulae. What page are we on, Danny? Have you found it? 18. And these apply to particular sections of beam. So I is the um, second moment of area measured from the neutral axis to a point A. So I substit NA. So we're, we're, we're calculating from for a cross section. So if we look at the first one here, that's actually to do with a rectangular cross-section. So it's a beam that looks a bit like that. So we might want to draw this diagram in. And it's assumed that B is this dimension, and D is this dimension. And you remember from the, we were looking a minute or two ago at this neutral axis. The neutral axis is taken to be along the beam in this direction, like that, through the middle. So the bending is all happening in this sense. So D will be that dimension across the, the depth of the beam. B will be the length of the beam. And this formula is now telling us that the second moment of area is given by BD cubed over 12. And how that's arrived at is from an integration across the beam. And we'll, as I say, we might look at that when we look at integration, definite integration. There are some other standard shapes. So if you look underneath here, we've got some more formulae. One, two, three, four more formulae. And they're to do with different types of beam. Actually, uh, so the first one is to do with a cylindrical beam. So if you look at the cross-section at the end, it's a circle, solid cylinder. Uh, and D, in this particular formula, represents the diameter of the beam. So the diameter is D. So the second moment of area is pi times the diameter to the power 4 over 64. Yeah, solid cylinder. 
Now the other three can be derived from these two basic formulas. So the next one is actually an I-beam. If I draw an I-beam in here, like this, If we draw this I beam in, that allows us to find the second moment of area for this I beam. And we can see, if we compare this formula to the one for the rectangular section, that actually they're similar. And if this dimension here is B, so from there to there is capital B, and from here to here, is capital B, then if we look at the um, first part of this formula, the second moment area, we notice it's exactly the same as the one for the rectangular cross section. So in other words, this is the second moment area of area for a rectangular beam of that size. Ooh, of that size. Okay? And so what we then have to do is subtract this bit and this bit. So actually this formula, this is minus two lots of these two bits. So um, in this particular case, little b is the distance from here to here, and little d is the distance from there to there. So in other words, an I-beam is, is found, the second moment area is found by taking away those two areas from the rectangular section. Remember the second moment of area is, is, some, uh, is a, a calculation of the effect of this moment on a particular area, like a rectangular cross-section or a circular cross-section or in this case an I-beam. With that in mind, what does it look as though this next formula might be? Looks like we've got DD cubed over 12, like a large rectangle, minus little DD cubed over 12. So in fact, it turns out we have BD cubed over 12, the large rectangle, minus little BD cubed over 12. In other words, it's a box section. Where again, B is the distance right the way across, C is the depth of the whole thing, and little b and little d are the internal dimensions of this box section. So if we want to find, uh, use the Benning equation, on the box section, and we want to find the second moment of area, we use this formula. What about the last one? In the light of what we've just been talking about, what sort of section do you think the last one is to be? A hollow tube, exactly right, James, yeah. We've got the whole diameter of the tube minus the inner diameter. So in this particular case, um, D is the outer diameter, and little d is the inner diameter. And there, are, there are others we can come up with, and by using integration, we can find the second moment of area for other cross sections, but these are the common ones, and they're the ones we're going to stick to. You know, any question you might get in the exam or any practical work you do will be using one of these. So let's look at an example of using this bending equation then. So this is a rectangular beam, length 500 mil, and that's the length across which it's being stressed. So there's some sort of bending happening in this sense on the beam. Uh, the depth is 400 millimetres. We've got to find out what the applied moment is on this beam if the stress is 250 meganewtons per square metre. So the steps that are involved are write down the um, bending equation, 
decide which ratios are going to be useful to us. So we're only ever going to use two of the ratios that are involved. So we cross out the one that was not needed. We get that formula into the correct form to find, in this case, the applied moment, which is M, capital M, and then put the values in. Okay. Often, as part of that process, we need to find the second moment of area, so then we need to use the relevant formula to find I. Okay. So let's look at the bending equation. So we write down the bending equation. And what can we find and what do we know to do with that bending equation? And which ratio is, is not important to us? If we look back at the definition of what of all these things are, y, for example, is the distance from the neutral axis to a point. So that's usually, because we're normally interested in what is, this is happening across the whole beam, that's usually to a point on the outside of the beam. So if you look at this example, um, if there's a neutral axis going through the middle of the beam here, then y is this distance here. So in fact, y equals d over 2, the depth over 2, half the depth of the beam. And that's common in questions involving the bending equation. It's common for y to equal d over 2. So because we know the depth of the beam, we automatically know y. We know it's a rectangular cross-section, so we could find, if we wanted to, the second moment of area. So now looking at the bending equation here, which ratios are the, are the ones that we're going, to, we're going to use? So we're going to use the first ratio, sigma over y, because we know that, and the other ratio is m over i. Must use that because it involves what we want to find. So when using the bending equation, the first thing to ask yourself is, what am I asked to find? The applied moment in this case. So the one of the ratios I'm going to use has got to be the one that involves applied moment. The only question is then, which is the other one I'm going to use? So in this case, we're not using this. Okay? So M over I equals sigma over y. Rearrange the formula for m, multiply both sides by the, applied, the um, second moment of area, and we get that m equals sigma over y times i. Got the formula and we've got um, the formula in the right form to find m. Now we need the values. And we write down the values which are going to in, go in here, do any calculations, writing down the value in the correct units. So um, in the case of sigma, we can write down what sigma is. 250 meganewtons, so write it as 250 times 10 to the 6 newtons per square metre. The square metre is telling me that all lengths have got to be in metres. So y equals d over 2 equals um, what's d? 400 millimetres. So that's 0 0.4 over 2, 0 0.2 metres. So y is 0 0.2 metres. Sigma is 250 times 10 to the 6. And we've got to calculate I. So I equals, using the second moment of area, B, D, Q over 12 for a rectangular beam. Again, B equals... 500 millimetres, which is 0.5 metres, and D equals uh, 0.4 metres. So we can work out I. And then we can plug that value in to the first formula to find M. So if you'd like to finish that plugging off, so I equals 2.66 times 10 to the minus 3 in the units, metres to the power 4 from the formula. 
And now we can put that value into the original formula. N sigma over Times r, yeah, sigma over y times r. Put the values in, and we get we get 3.33 times 10 to the 6 newton meters. Or okay, so now we can. That's good. In a way, hold on to the accuracy, and that's one of the disadvantages of do doing this. If we calculate i, we've got a number which we then got to round and put in and round again, so compounding error. Either you leave it in the calculator and then just put it in as the answer, uh, yeah. or leave lots of extra inflators in there. 3.33 times 10 to the 6 Newton meters because it's in um, it's a moment, and we've rounded, so that will be to three significant figures. Okay. Algebraically, we could have done this a different way from a maths point of view because if we look at this bottom formula, uh, top formula rather, n equals sigma y over i, I could substitute in the formula for i and then do it in one hit. Let me show you what I mean by that. Obviously, you can always do it the way you've just done it, but in some problems, as, you will, as we will see when we look at examples in other problems, sometimes it's convenient to go down the algebra route. So if we now look at this, we've got m equals sigma over y times i, for i is d d cubed over 12. However, we know that y equals d over 2. So we could write that n equals sigma over d over 2 times d d cubed over 12. So in fact, it could all be written over 12 like that. Now if we look at this, we can see that this 2 goes into the 12 to give us 6. And the d on the bottom cancels with one of the d's on the top to leave d squared. So we've actually got n equals sigma d d squared over 6. And if you put those values into your calculator, you should find you get exactly the same answer. And you've done it in one hit, which holds the accuracy. So let's look at uh, example number three on this tutorial sheet, which is on page 19, is it? Something like that. Yeah, for example. And do this one together. We'll start this one off together, and then you can finish it. And then I'll give you a chance to have a look at some of the other examples on this tutorial sheet. So in a problem like this, I'd always recommend the first step is to draw it out. So I've done that. And put on the information you've been given. Then I would consider the neutral axis, which runs around the centre of this strip that goes around the drum. So the neutral axis runs through the middle. Whenever we bend something, as we were saying at the beginning, there's this neutral axis, which in a uniform strip, which is not being deformed, so it's held its diameter as it's been bent, it's held its thickness rather, all the way around, the neutral axis runs through the middle. And that's important to recognise where the neutral axis is because if we think back to the definitions for here, that distance y is measured from the neutral axis. The radius of curvature of the bent beam, which is what we're going to be interested in this time because it's been bent into a circle, is measured to the neutral axis. So we need to take that into account when looking at the diagram. So if I'm going to try and calculate r, the radius of curvature, for example, that's measured to the neutral axis. So, we've got to determine the bending stress. We write down the bending equation, and then we decide which ratios we're interested in. So let's write down the bending equation. Sigma over y equals m over i equals e over r. Which two ratios are we going to keep this time? Right, so we're not interested in this. So we don't need to calculate any set moments of area. We're interested in sigma, so we need to rearrange it for sigma. 
e over r times y. Now all we've got to do is just check out what e, y, and r are. Well, we've given e, but we've just got to work out what our y is. So what is y? To the outside of the strip. Yeah, so y equals, again, d over t, and d equals 4 millimetres. So we've got d equals to 4 millimetres, which is 0.004 metres, because we need to be working in metres. Um, so we can work out what y is, it's half of that, what about R? What will R be? Yep, exactly the radius, 0.8. Remember where R is measured to, if you look at the definition of R, it's measured to the nuclear axis. So we've got to add on an extra two millimeters, okay? So R equals 0.8 plus 0.002, which is 0.802 meters. So that needs to be always taken into account. When the radius of field is measured to the nuclear axis. So now we know the values for D. We can work out what Y is. We know R, so we can plug them in and calculate the stress. So if you expect to finish that problem off. So this gives us an answer of 4.99 times 10 to the 6 newtons per square metre, the three significant figures, or maybe more appropriately 5, and we can use the mega newton instead of times 10 to the 6, 5 mega newtons per square metre for one significant figure, which is possibly more appropriate as we only know Young's modulus for one significant figure. So as an accuracy issue. When it comes to exam questions, I'm not going to be over stressed about this, but in the real world, I think you need to take into account the accuracy of your answer and give an appropriate number of significant figures. Okay, now have a look at the tutorial questions in there, and I'll let you have a go at them. But let's just review what we've done before we do that. So, what's going on? We've got the bending equation, and it's all about using this which of the ones are we going to use? Which of these ratios are we going to use? We use the one that involves what we want to find, say the moment, and then the other ratio that we can find out. We know the values or we can find out what the values are. If um, we're measuring distances from the neutral axis, if we're measuring radiuses of curvature from the neutral axis, if we want to find the second moment of area, which is I, or we need the second moment of area, then we need further formulae to find the second moment of area, depending on whether or not it's a rectangular, circular, or an I-beam box section. Okay? Use that particular equation to find the second moment of area. Beware units. You tend to generally need to be in metres because stresses need to be uh, generally in per square metre, so units in metres. And then... Um, work it out. You can either work it out by using algebra and then at the end putting the value in to get the answer or you can work out you can work it out in fractions and come up with a final answer. Okay. So I'll leave you now to have a look at some of these tutorial questions.